feels good. It feels like I want to do another one fast. It's definitely a little bit like, I don't want to say it's, it's definitely not a drug. It's more of a satisfaction of like, hey, this is what I actually think I, I can do. And the reason I like to do it is because uh, the entertainment and the storytelling value. And I like, uh, I like live and I like people together. I like the community experience of, you know, paying attention. I still love going to the movies, you know, and don't want to watch it on the small screen. I like the, uh, I like being together with people in a room, and I, that's what I like about it. Hi, my name is Marco Greco, and I am playing Grog, as well as Borg, and Minotaur number two, and Hooded Man number one. Grog, Grog is a merchant seaman who has lost his, his, his cargo to some mythical creatures. And not only did he lose his cargo to some mythical creatures, but he also had a stowaway who he was kind enough to give an opportunity disappear with some uh, additional treasures who he gets to catch up with later on in the story. I'm also playing Borg, who is a very special Cyclops slash uh, crusher for hire, who's also a little conflicted feelings-wise, and you'd be surprised how much he really cares. And I also play one of the Minotaurs, who is a, uh, a, a mythical beast of some sort that serves as a henchman. And I also play a hooded man who uh, I'm sure is a kind man outside when he's not wearing his hood and probably loves his family, but in this is not so kind. Some of the characters that I'm playing are not the good guys. And also I would say um, not the bad guys either. You know, it's kind of sort of hard to describe. I mean, what do you say? Grog is sort of not a bad guy, you know, and but he does sort of create a problem for our heroines. And, and the, uh, I mean, it, I, I guess one of the characters is a guy who uh, helps paint the gray of the story, that good and bad is not always so black and white. I think for the character of Grog, when he sees someone who he probably presumed was dead, or someone he'd never see again. I think that is the strongest moment for me in the story because definitely, uh, you know, I've been having a bad day and then someone who's sort of part of that bad day that I really didn't expect to see shows up again. And I, I, I think a lot of people might know what that feels like. By reading the script, the situations, I'll draw from real life experiences and like the Cyclops and the argument in the Cyclops reminds me of a very specific friend of mine. So I kind of am looking to borrow elements of what he sounds like. In particular, he has a cadence. So when I'm doing the Cyclops, I'm really doing this, this friend of mine, Mike, kind of. And um, that's that's sort of the way I, 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 I'm approaching it. I think this, the story would appeal to Folks who enjoy fantasy, folks who enjoy adventure, you know, as well as young audience. But I also really think it could cross over to people who uh, enjoy things like uh, Star Wars or Sinbads or adventures like that. A lot of fun. I mean, I enjoy sitting around hearing it and seeing it. It's a nice group of people, you know, talented group of people, good energy. It's really hard to get a group of people together to focus in on something. So it's nice being in a room with everybody who's in focus and on it and giving it and going after it and having some gusto. It's, I appreciate it, you know? I'm an audience member when I'm not on it and I enjoy being in the audience. Mm -hmm.